You're listening to the Casual Swinger Podcast. As your host, we need to warn you that the material you're about to hear may be sexual or explicit in nature. This podcast is intended for an adult audience. Now, we don't expect you to act like adults. What's the fun in that? We're a married couple living in Florida with over 13 years of experience in the lifestyle, and we take almost nothing seriously. Casual Swinger is a variety show, meaning we'll cover everything from music to events, travel, and even the occasional hilarious screw-up. Our show is about entertainment. We're not licensed professionals. Had anything. And our stories, commentary, and guidance should not be confused with the opinions of a licensed professional. Now that you know, let's take those pants off and get comfy. Hey, all you guys and ghouls. Welcome back to Casual Swinger. I'm your co-host, Mallory. That feels like you were trying to say all you cool cats and kittens. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit. It had like a similar cadence. I got you. All right. And who are you, sir? Are you gonna Do kill, I know you? Are you going to kill me and leave me in the swamp? <laughs> hey, the, no proof yet. Okay, but there's still a little psycho there. I mean, it's like... Maybe. And again, kind sir, what is your name? Oh, I'm Mickey. Hi, nice to meet you, Mickey. Hey, do you want to hook up with the guy you just met? Because that'd be fun. Sure, why not? <laughs> All right, sweet. Hell yeah. No, I'm kidding. Aw. Anyway, bump, bump. so, hey, this is our Halloween episode. It is. Did you guys like the spooky music? It was very, very I, spooky. It was spooky. I liked it. Good yeah. job. No, you know what? I, I like mixing it up at the holidays for these guys, mixing it up. When I mean, like, I remember last year, and I just figured this out, because when I went back to find the audio for this episode that's coming up after this one, uh, since it's a throwback episode, I actually found where all of our fellow podcasters for our anniversary last year recorded our intros for us. Aww. Which was super cool. And I, I was like, oh, I love that we do like silly shit like that. We I do. We haven't done any of that this season. I like, but I like being a little cheesy. Yeah, it's fun. I think it's part of our charm. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I don't even know if it's fucking charming, but it was, it was <laughs> a really good time. So, you know, we, uh, we really kind of enjoy doing that sort of thing for you guys. And this episode is called Ghosts of Swingers Past. By Ghosts of Swingers Past, we're going to get into a little bit later in the episode talking about the lessons that we learned through positive and negative experiences as lifestylers being at it as long as we have been. And if some of those things that we've been through haunt us to sure. this day as opposed to teaching us positive lessons. Sure. I mean, so many things happen in our lifetime that shape our past and how we react to specific situations. So we're going to cover some of that later. Yeah, that'll be cool. Yeah, but before we get into it and go over our housekeeping items, two things. First of all, I got some fucking jokes for you because it's oh Halloween. Oh, my God. You got the <laughs> fucking jokes again? Come on. Come on. I love this. Okay. It's second year in a row. Like, yeah, I have to do this. You know some crazy Third lady's going to recite them to you in a pool somewhere. I love that. Please okay. do. All right. So first question. What do you call a pumpkin that is carved in September? A uh, West Virginia pumpkin? <laughs> A premature ejaculantern. Oh my god! <laughs> Come on, that's cute. Oh, womp womp. That's cute. You know it is. Can <laughs> I do you. one more? Oh yeah. Well, by all means. <laughs> what is a vampire's favorite part of sex? The orgasm. It's my favorite part. <laughs> Ejaculating. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. It's so cheesy. It's funny. Oh, God. All right. Yeah, you know, Whatever. I'm moving on. I, I think people have grown to really appreciate your mom jokes at Halloween. I think mom jokes like are greater than dad jokes. Well, yeah. Everything's greater than dad. <laughs> we're, we're at the bottom of the fucking food chain in this house. It's just how it works. But, yeah, that was, that was pretty good stuff. So, okay. So, there's your Halloween jokes, folks. I hope you enjoyed them. Uh, what do we got going on? What are we doing here in the lead in? Well, first things first, uh, before, you know, I mean, we get in too deep, you guys might remember that we were doing a promotion on behalf of casual toys and casual uh, for double date nation and double date nation.com. Those are our friends, Dave and Andy. Uh, this is honestly, and, and you guys that have gotten in on this have seen this already. It's an amazing platform. It's a platform that's got so much capability but there weren't a lot of people there yet, and that's something that we really wanted to help them change because what we love about Double Date Nation's approach is they're so authentic. They're not out there you know, buying up user accounts where there's no people. There's just a bunch of accounts that never check their email. Right. Everybody there is real, right. and we really, really dig that, and we love that they're growing organically and authentically. 
That is such a positive thing. So we wanted to support them. So what we offered is we offered a womanizer premium, which is Mallory's favorite by far sex toy. Hands down. Ultimate toy. Never leave home without it. Yeah, it's it's an amazing toy. It's great for couples play. It's great for personal play. For a girl, it's really not worth a shit if you're a dude. But, you know, for girls, they love it. So we said we are going to give one of these away, which is, by the way, it's a $190 toy. Yeah. So it's not a cheap toy by any means. It's a premium sex toy. We're going to give it away to somebody that bought a lifetime membership to Double Date Nation between, it was like early September, or no, it was uh Early October through mid no, what is it? Early August through mid. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're so close. It was early August through the end of September. This is why I'm not allowed to talk. It's okay. I was just gonna let you figure it out. Just kind of trip over. I'm it sorry. I, I should have rescued you, huh? No, just like leave me to die. Okay, like you did it, Hito. All right, I am on. I'm on edge here. Can we announce the winner already? Yes, we can. Because we've been waiting weeks for this. We did pull a winner. We have a winner. Now we still have the. Big announcement coming from Double Date Nation. We're going to leave that to those guys, but we do have a winner for you. And uh, drum roll, please. That's not a drum roll. It's like <laughs> motorboat. <laughs> do, do, do I say it? You say it? We say it together? You say it. All right. So if you are on Twitter at Birch Soul 11, congratulations. You've just won an amazing toy. Amazing. <laughs> so there you go. Birch Soul 11. I'm going to reach out to you on Twitter tomorrow, Birch Soul, and we're going to get an address for you. We're going to send you your fancy schmancy brand new womanizer premium. Yes. And I want a review. <laughs> yes, that's what we ask for in return. Yeah. It's a review. Just let on me know if you love it. Casualtoys.com, who donated that prize, which is awesome. And hey, by the way, since we're talking about casualtoys.com, make sure to check it out between now and the end of the month. Blush novelties are on sale, 30% off. What are we talking about, Blush? Blush makes everything under the sun, from they, dildos to vibrators to nipple clamps to cock rings. Sure, and I, I call them an economical line too because they're very reasonably priced but what i love about that in that category is that their the quality of product is still there i have a very very picky vagina that's super super sensitive and i've been very happy with every accoutrement um i buy a lot of their uh, dildos for harnesses yeah that, for they, example. they make a really great line for that Matter of fact, Super we have line. some friends in the content creation space who were looking for a girthy piece, mm -hmm. and it was a blush piece that we ended up sending them, and it's genuinely impressive. Yeah, and they have everything. They have rabbit toys, they have vibrators, they have, you name it, they, oh, yeah. they make it. Yeah, they do, and it, so I, I kind of refer to them as kind of the Ford or the Chevy of sex toys in the respect that it's, it's good quality. It's not a Ferrari or a Mercedes by any means, but it's still good quality, and it's excellent for the price, so check that out on casualtoys.com. And that's between now and the end of the month, of course. Now, yeah. <gasps> what are we doing? over the? I mean, it's every night right now. What are we doing? It's getting ready, right? Getting ready? For heat. Oh, oh, yeah. I've been packing like a fool. So we have... Uh, How do you pack two weeks in advance? Who the fuck does that? Because I'm a micromanager and I'm a control freak and I like to be well prepared. And I do 90% of the packing. So it takes time, especially with my schedule. So I organize every little step I do by the day. <laughs> I'm going to stop talking about my neuroses and oh, move on. It's uh, She's not kidding, guys. Like, she literally has little sandwich bags with what's in the bag written on it. And each bag has an outfit for a different day. Isn't it great that they fit in sandwich bags, though? It is kind of great <laughs> that they fit in sandwich bags. <laughs> but it's just the craziest thing. And for me, being a dude, I can basically pack one pair of shorts, two T-shirts, and that's it for the week. Oh, oh, poor you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, come on. I have to carry all the techie shit. I have to carry all our podcasting stuff and our recording stuff and all the stuff for the rascals. And you know, you know what the rest of the bag is for? My hats. Yes, I was going to say you have an entire suitcase of just hats, yeah, which is I, I was a lot adorable. Of fucking hats. It's getting out of control. So November sold out. Um, we're getting ready to leave here soon. So if anyone's interested in traveling with us, there is the February trip. Yes, uh, that's right around the corner. There's still some rooms available. If you have questions about the trip, traveling during these times, um, anything, anything, feel free to hit us up at uh, casualswinger.com. Select travel with us. Yes, or, or you can look for more information at rachelsrascals.com. That is R A. C H A L S rascals.com. There you go. Or you can just email us at podcast at casual swinger if you want to do that. And we'll cool. absolutely tell you all about what we've got going on. So, this trip coming up in February, 
And honestly, even if you're going with us on this trip here in a few days, so if you're listening to this, you know, hot off the presses, uh, listen to this, and this is kind of important, and we're not trying to scare anybody, but, you know, tragedies happen when you travel, and when you travel outside your home country, some of those tragedies can be kind of expensive, and, sure, you know, we, we just had this experience, not with anybody in our group or in the Rascals or anything, but there was just a, a tragedy down in Jamaica that we heard about, and it, it's so difficult when these things happen and you're so far from home and you're not prepared and I'm not saying they weren't prepared they very well might be but oh my god how much worse would it be if you're not yeah and that's what travel insurance is for yeah it's just a reminder to us to to cover our bases and make sure you know that we have our ducks in a row with that because you know anything could happen you know I could get like the world's most wicked splinter in my foot and have it get infected and you know, I'm in a third world country like you have to have some sort of recourse so I'm I feel a little ashamed that we haven't thought about this before but I'm glad that we're taking the steps to do it now and there's also another announcement right with as far as traveling into that country specifically what their requirements are going to be yeah we don't have a lot of data on this just yet but what Mallory's talking about it's right now it's it's well, evolving. it's in flux, yeah. yeah. So what's happening is there was a news story that hit the wire today. It was a press release from the Ministry of Tourism from the island of Jamaica that said that there will be a compulsory travel insurance for visitors to the island of Jamaica starting on November 2nd. That's really soon to require everybody that comes in to need this. So there, there's some question as to how legitimate that is. Yeah. Uh, but what they're saying, so the insurance is called Jamaica Cares. And that insurance is estimated to cost about $40 per person and provide $100,000 in medical insurance to anybody coming to the island, according to the press release that I read today. Now, again, I don't have information. I personally reached out to the Ministry of Tourism. I personally reached out to the uh, PR manager for the Ministry of Tourism as well. And I also asked our friend Terry, who's a reporter for CNN, to reach out to get a little media weight behind it and see if we could get an answer. Yeah. So if we get that answer. We're going to give that to you guys probably on Twitter, Facebook, and everywhere else. We're going to put that wherever you guys can find it so you don't have to wait for an episode. But what we do want you to do is if you are traveling outside this country, it doesn't matter whether you're traveling with us, you're going to Hito, you're going to Desire, doesn't matter where you're going, I want you to use your head and get some travel insurance, whether it's compulsory or not, because it's not just about getting sick. It's also like silly things that happen all the time, like losing your luggage. We were just talking about, you know, we've been very fortunate that we've never dropped a mic in the pool. And then the second that came out of our mouths, we were like, and this is going to be the time we drop a mic in the pool. Especially after I just bought $700 mics. Well, that's just it. And it covers that. Like, you know, so, yeah, like little important. things you wouldn't think about. And typically, like nothing I bring is of great value, mm -hmm. right? But something like that is. Well, I mean, even if like, you know, one time our DJ had his cell phone stolen. That's right. His brand new iPhone got stolen off a table. Yeah. Sitting outside. He was smoking weed. He just didn't even notice it. And it disappeared. So yeah. these things happen. And, you know, good people and bad people come in all shapes and sizes. They don't have to be from foreign countries. And sometimes, as much as we'd love to say that everyone that's at the resort with us is our friend or even our family in some cases, not everybody is. Sure. So that's what insurance is for. Enough of that PSA. Uh, guys, just make sure you pick that up. Now, what are we doing for Halloween? <gasps> I'm here? so excited about this. Okay, everyone listen up. So we are homebound for Halloween, right? And what better thing could we possibly do virtually is participate in Swinging Down Under's event. It's a virtual Halloween party. A virtual Halloween party. Yeah. We, it's going to be an actual fucking Halloween party. It's legit. It's just going to be you and I in a room virtually with everybody else. Yeah, right? So we're dressing up. She's got games. She's got prizes. We have... Um, we have prizes. We're giving away we a has, rodeo. We do. We have prizes. She's giving away a Yandy uh, gift certificate yeah. and... A bunch of other people are going to be, be there, like Sapphic Swingers and Swingers Help. We're all going to be help uh, helping to host this event. Mm -hmm. So now I have to figure out which of my many, many costumes I'm going to get to wear. And maybe I'll even do a costume change. I don't know. Maybe we should go to like Spirit Halloween before Saturday and just like do something different and <gasps> crazy. Have you seen my costume closet though, dude? Like I know, but you're going to need something you can wear in front of humans. I... Oh, well, they're swingers. <laughs> oh, that'll be fine then. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. I, good point, though. Yeah. Good point. I probably should toe the line between, like, slutty and tame. Are you still going to, like, dance naked for me wearing a Chewbacca mask? If you really want me to, I'd do anything for you. But I can't hey. make the noise. Oh, yes, you can. 
I just got to rub it the right way. No, it just sounds like I'm gurgling Listerine. <laughs> That's just fucked up. Oh, God. So, hey, let's talk about what else we've been up to before we bounce out of here and get on with the rest of the ghosts of Swingers Past. Ooh. Um, we've been doing really normal shit lately. Like, you know, family, work, dogs, you know, trying to stay sane. Right. I think that's what everybody's doing in the Life Star right now. No, we did yeah. have some super amazing friends come down and visit, which was pretty cool. Yes. Yeah, Didn't that. Suck. Oh, God, I love pe- those people and I miss them so much. Well, Very my favorite ducks. thing is you guys are going to hear from these guys in less than two weeks because this episode is late. It's late because it was my birthday. It's late because I got fucking drunk on my birthday and it was not <laughs> a good time to record. Yeah, it's been, you know, we've been... Uh, heavy on the tasks, yeah, and the and the honey do's and the to do's and all that stuff. So, and the first round of this didn't work out all that great. So, no, this is, this actually, is a second recording. Yeah, it doesn't. We're very fortunate; it doesn't happen too often. But no, you know? it doesn't. But you know what I love about this is that this next episode that's coming out while we're at Hedo, so this episode's going to drop is actually with Derek and Jess, and these are our friends from the beautiful beautiful state of Iowa who came down and visited us just a couple weeks ago and that this was we recorded this last year after the February Rascals trip which was their virgin trip to Hito and they were so prolific and so amazing and so friendly and so outgoing and gregarious and just really ate up everything that Hito had to offer so we thought hey we're going to do this episode with them and then COVID hit and we felt like assholes because we didn't want to talk about like a party while people yeah, were Yeah, it seemed vastly inappropriate to put something out there that, you know, painted this. It really was a beautiful picture. Watching them embrace the the spirit, the mind, body, soul of the resort and just go for it and have a high level of communication and, and get closer to each other. It was just so fucking beautiful to see. But yeah, you're right. It felt wrong to release it right after all of the, the shit started hitting the fans. So. I agree. Well, I personally would watch Jess eat cereal. I, <laughs> I mean, just saying. What wouldn't we watch her do? <laughs> Either of them. Come on. Well, I mean, I don't, Derek can go, you can watch him eat cereal. I want to watch <laughs> her eat cereal. <laughs> but, now, of course, Jess, if you're listening to this, I would, I've got like a list of things that come before you eating cereal, but. All right. You know, you have to share though. Oh, damn it. You I'm, are a swinger. You have to learn I how suck to at share. share. Anyway, Uh, but hey, we did find a really cool bar for an upcoming meet and greet that we've got and like kind of we're bouncing around in our head. That's true. We're looking at, you know, fingers crossed doing something maybe in the spring. Yeah, because this bar has a pool, right? It does. Which is on the river. So badass. It's in Sanford, Florida, which is just outside of Orlando, a little north. So it's kind of it's you know, I think we could pull a crowd from Jacksonville and Orlando. Well, it is conveniently located because the I-4, it's it's like right there, which is the main thing you know, highway thoroughfare, whatever you want to call it, you know, through this area. So I think this is probably going to be the one. So fingers crossed that sometime this spring yeah, we'll be announcing Yeah, really that. friendly owner. I think, you know, let us know if you'd be interested in attending a party here in the States. Yeah. Thrown by yours truly, Mickey and Mallory. That's us. Yeah, I would love that. I'm, I'm really, really happy they were open. Like, it's hard when you engage people like that and you're like, they're going to be swingers where we know how to behave, but we just... We don't want to lie to you. Right. And that's not usually received well. Yeah, it turns out the owner of the bar used to be a owner of a lifestyle club. So, dude, like how, like jackpot. Yeah, right. Yes. I tripped so, over this shit too. So, so we don't have to explain anything. This is great. All right. Well, hey, guys, let's talk about this episode and we'll get on with it. But this is the ghost of Swingers Past. So, wh- what are we talking about with that? So, Again, we have hundreds of thousands of experiences in our life, and depending on how we view them, sometimes we make decisions based on those experiences that determine how we interact in future engagements of similar, right? Mm-hmm. So unfortunately, it's it's natural default human behavior that a lot of that memory is stored with negative experiences because the red flag is much more visible or much more um, tangible than then maybe some of the softer stuff because when you have the green flag it's it's warm and fuzzy but it doesn't resonate as hard as that red red flag does well so, and i tell you what resonated for me is when the idea for this episode came up because i had this thing that i thought would be really good for this episode and it we had a hard time putting it together it really didn't gel and then i was talking to a listener of ours who's also a friend of ours that we'll call composite god and okay you know composite god had this other idea 
that was it was fucking magical, which I'm not surprised because he's a genius. And when he mentioned it, 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 which was was really just kind of he he said ghost of swingers past. And I thought about how haunted I am by some of the things that we've had happen. And I thought, wow, being haunted by my past is is so negative, but it's so pivotal. There's so many things I do and don't do because of the things I'm haunted by. We need to talk about this. Yeah, no, and I'm with you. And, and you know, a lot of those obviously aren't going to be great experiences. Some of them good, but I think it's very interesting to take a pause and stock in how we've interacted since then and it's yeah. not really something we've done a lot of no it isn't so i'm looking forward to doing this i think it's going to be a blast so we're going to jump in mallory's going to tell you guys how to find us before we jump into this but make sure you check out casualtoys.com and make sure on saturday on halloween you join us with swinging down under yes. that's going to be a hoot yes please join us and i forgot to mention that it's completely Free. Look Ooh, for it on free social stuff. media. Free. Just go sign up, get the link, and come party with us, please. We'd yeah. love to have a, an amazing Saturday night with you guys. Put your crotch goblins to bed and join us swinging down under sapphic swingers and swingers help. And many, many, many more. Damn good time. And all you guys. Oh, all you right. cool cats and kittens. Oh, there we go again. No anyway. more jokes. Tell everybody where to find us. Oh, you're awfully fucking bossy. Wait till we get to the bedroom. Mm, okay, I'm doing it now. <laughs> all right, we're Casual Swinger everywhere. You can find us at casualswinger.com. Want to send us a message? Podcast at Casual Swinger. We're on social media as well. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And if you'd like to check out our dating profiles, hey, hey, you can find us on Double Date Nation, SDC, SLS, and Quiver and Cassidy. All right, let's get spooky. The ghost of Christmas past. You've been listening to Casual Swinger. Welcome back, everybody, to Casual Swinger. My name is Mickey Stein. <laughs> My name is the bride of Mickey Stein. Oh, is that who you are? Now? I don't know. No, I'm I'm just Mallory. I just want you to have her hair, like the whole bride of Frankenstein hair. That'd be so That cool. would be pretty cool, but I think it takes a lot of Aquanet. I would like that a lot better than bad mom jokes. Aw, but I have one more. Oh, no. <laughs> just I didn't one. really need to bring it's that up. So, they're so cute this year, and I'm stuck on the vampire ones. All so, right. All right. Here we go. One <clears> more. <throat> What do Dracula's girlfriend and a professional boxer have in common? They both don't know when to do what they're told? <sighs> no. <laughs> they both get down for the count. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, love these. All right, no more. I'm no done. No chance I put my dick in a vampire's mouth. I I think that's gambling. Right? Yeah. And going down on the count. Mm-mm. <laughs> no, no. I've seen what those Black and Decker Packer records look like. Like, I knew better. Like, even, like, when I was in high school, I'm like, no, no. Oh, like the girls with braces? Uh-huh. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> it's dangerous. But, you know, you, yeah, no, I think you still did it. At least twice. The only bad thing that ever happened to me with metal was getting my dick stuck in your purse. And that wasn't my fault. That was Rachel's fault. Yeah, that's actually She set my dick up in your purse. because I. Well, <laughs> you were such a baby about it. Like, you didn't bruise. It didn't even break the skin. And, like, you whined for the rest of the week. It was awful. It was It was literally, it was worse than surgery. It was uh, terrible. No. You guys left me to False die. False trauma. False trauma. No, no, not fake news. This is real. No. It was terrible. Anywho, let's get into the meat of our conversation today. We were talking about ghosts of Swinger's past. Yeah, so how does the things that happen to us, how, how does that that feeling or that emotion of what's happened to us in the past affect the lifestyle in particular? Because, you know, it's pretty easy to say that I hit myself in the thumb every time I try to drive in a nail, so I'm going to pay somebody to do that from now on. But when it comes to interpersonal relationships and things like that, it is probably a little bit different. Absolutely. I mean, there's... Again, through through our lives, we have all these experiences that culminate to, you know, ultimately decisions we make moving forward based on whether we classify them as good or bad. Mm -hmm. And it's like this, the like a fork in the road, right? Well, right. And like I just said, like hitting myself with a hammer is, is probably a negative experience. But I think negative experiences, by and large, they're what really resonate with us. 
and fear resonates with us. It's why sure. insurance companies use it to sell. It's why the media uses it to get our attention so they can sell advertising. They say the scariest shit you can think of. Oh, my God. People are dying. Oh, my yeah. God. But, this could be important. Yeah. It's yeah. fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And yeah. we kind of respond to that. We're conditioned to respond to that. Well, I mean, it's a process of elimination, right? Mm-hmm. Because we know this evil or that evil or that this bad thing. So we navigate ourselves to avoid those even though we don't know exactly what the other influence may be or the other impact may be until we hit a wall. Yeah, yeah it's, that seems to be pretty common. And and I think that we, we constantly tell people, I know we do on this show, if you've been listening to it for longer than 60 seconds, that the lifestyle in real life aren't that far apart. I think in a lot of people's heads there are. As a matter of fact, I was talking to one of my doctors uh, just the other day who I became friends with, and I love the guy, but... You know, he kind of referred to swingers in key parties and he started talking about key parties because he was having a conversation <laughs> with somebody else. Yeah. And, and they brought up key parties. And it's like, why does every vanilla bring up the most audacious thing they can ever think of or have ever heard of? It's like the, it's wife swapping. Yeah. It's the level of, of exposure, right? It the, must be. Yeah. What, the, what they have at their disposal or what they've been privy to, whether that's a movie or a book or hearsay. A lot of it's mm-hmm. hearsay, right? I mean, I can't, I, I don't know anyone who's ever been to a key party. Me either. I mean, well, I, maybe we could but talk to I our mean, parents and see if yeah, one of them Yeah, actually, is. I'll ask my dad. I will yeah. totally ask my dad if he ever did key parties back in the day because that, you know, if you, key parties are synonymous with the 70s swingers, right? Yeah, well, I mean, probably talk to somebody that, you know, did the whole, like, Plato's retreat thing or whatever. In oh, New that York would be or whatever. so awesome. It would be pretty neat to catch up with totally somebody cool. that did that. That would be totally cool. So, but, no, so I, it's kind of a live, live and learn thing, right? What we're talking about is how we decide which path or fork in the road that we're going to take. Yeah, and I think that we try to repeat successes. We try to avoid failures, and I think that's why we remember the negative things. And the positive things, I think we just kind of hope, hey, that went well last time. Well, maybe we'll give it a go again. But do do we take these negative experiences and and kind of – let them shape our future interactions or do we just keep them in the back of our mind? I mean, how do you, how do you approach it in our relationship? Cause I think you and I approach it differently in, in ways. We do. I, I'm definitely a little more on the cautious side. If I know a previous experience that was negative had happened, I'm absolutely going to base my decision on that. Do, is that fair? Is that right? Probably not. I thought a lot about this over the last you know, few weeks as we were discussing this subject matter. And I think I could absolutely identify lost opportunity based on that one, literally one experience I've had that didn't turn out in a good way and identified that as a red flag. And, you know, I don't think I can actually apply that across the board. You know, I'm, I'm absolutely missing opportunities because... I'm, I'm not putting myself out there based on that one singular experience. Right. And it's funny because I tend to try to put the bad stuff behind me a little more and, and put myself out there again. And so sometimes I do get kind of slammed in the door more often again. Sure. And I'm like, dumbass, you already hit your thumb with the hammer. Yeah. and I'm like, Why would you do that but again? But I have 10 fingers. <laughs> so I give it another go. And I think that, you know, we've seen this. So we're going to talk about this as, as we progress here. Some of the actual things that have happened to us that have shaped the way we behave. But I think for me, I, I tend to try to ignore the negatives and focus on the positives and say, maybe it'll be better this time. Maybe it'll get better. Well, and it's the same thing for me with the positives, because then I've identified that as high potential, like, you know, high level of, you know, pleasurable or outcome or. A great example of that is the first time we ever played. The first time you ever played, oh, it was like, it was legendary. It was epic. It was absolutely epic. I've been chasing the dragon. Yeah, no, It right. was amazing. And I thought that was what the whole lifestyle was going to be like. But conversely, can have you ever thought about. The, the people that are, are complete newbies that go out and their first experience is awful and what happens to them after the fact? Like, do they abandon this venture altogether? Well, or? ironically enough, we literally just had that conversation with a listener on one of the lifestyle dating sites uh, just this week, actually, where, uh, you know, a friend from Texas, yes, I'm talking about you, buddy, uh, that didn't have a great experience and it was just a, a soft swap experience, but it wasn't great. And 
you know, it wasn't necessarily what I liked about his approach and the reason why I was so quick to respond to him was he really was positive about the lifestyle and their role in the lifestyle and where they were. And that's awesome. He acknowledged that they were new and that, you know, maybe, you know, it's good. There's going to be some training wheels. And, and the only issue he had was communicating with the other couple because he didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings that's and he tough, didn't yeah. want to put anybody out. He just didn't want to do that again. And I was like, you know, I, I really appreciate that you're staying positive. You're not blaming something you maybe don't understand completely because you're new in the lifestyle. And you're just trying to make sure that you communicate clearly and positively with other people, even if the answer is no. And I'm like, man, this guy's going to make a great lifestyler because Absolutely. his intuition was spot the fuck on. Wow. I bet he has a high level of emotional intelligence. I'm I'm willing to bet that he does based on the you know additional conversation we've had, but... Uh, you know, so let's talk about where we go with these experiences, right? I mean, would you change your behavior long term over one negative or positive experience? I want to say no, but I know I have in the past. And this is something I've thought a lot about and I, I want to take pause and stock in the situation and reevaluate it because I'm... I make decisions very quickly, especially in that environment. And when it's negative, I don't dwell on it. It's pushed to the side, but I, I tend to not revisit it. So I think that's a, a personal shortcoming that I have. Now, for example, the single guy that we hooked up with for the first time, and we didn't even have sex. We met it seemed to go okay. There were there were a few signs that maybe this wasn't it, but we were gonna. I was gonna venture into it anyway, and it turned into a, a total shit show. The guy totally went off the deep end. He started saying awful things about you, and you didn't. He, you guys didn't even know each other, and then turned into the stalker esque type of human, and it just kept drilling me and telling me these awful things. And I, I'm not gonna lie, I flew off the handle. Mm -hmm. It's like, don't you ever contact me again. This is absolutely inappropriate. I've asked you nicely to stop and I'm blocking you because I, I'm just done. This is insane. And if this is what it's going to be like, I'm not interested. And I abandoned the, the hot wife single guy thing for years. Like It was really a long time. Many, and, many years. You know, it's funny because that whole situation, we're kind of progressing now into some of the experiences that have shaped the path we've taken and I think that was the first really major experience that made an impact on you negatively. Yeah, and I think why I took it to heart, when I invest myself in, in something, and it doesn't matter what it is, it could be work-related, our kids, you, the lifestyle, mm -hmm. I'm in. I'm in 100%. I'm, I'm all about new experiences. I'm completely open-minded. And hell, I'll sometimes try things twice just for good measure. Yeah. And that, 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 totally turned me off. It put a sour taste in my mouth and it took me a long time to even have the ability to revisit the idea of it. Well, there were red flags too. So one of the things that we want to make sure we do here is when we talk about these ghosts and whether they haunt us or not, and this one definitely haunted us for a few years, at least it haunted Mallory, which by proxy haunted me, uh, is what could we have done better? So this guy, we met him. Uh, he had excellent... Uh, validations it was I think we met him on SLS he had quite a few really positive uh you know reviews or you know people had testimonials a lot of nice things about, yeah. yeah had really nice things to say about him we met in a public place that wasn't super loud I think it was a Buffalo Wild Wings yeah grab a couple tame. beers and some wings just to shoot the shit Chill. yeah he showed up dressed like the Unabomber he was in sweats and like a zip-up hoodie and he didn't come from the gym you know uh, and I can forgive that because I don't know what his, you know, economic standing is. Like, maybe you're a nicer person in, than I am. Maybe that know. was dressing up. I didn't know. I didn't want to make any flash judgments. And okay. based on our conversation, everything went well. Now, he did make it known that he was interested in, in you know, hand on the knee, hand on the shoulder stuff, which i'm still conflicted it's all about the environment and my comfort level like i still don't know how comfortable i am with that interaction so soon during the first meeting and i know that's super weird 
Well, I think that's but part of what makes think, us casual swinger too. Yeah. We really don't rush into situations. And but I, I think what we could have done better in that situation is when you have, uh, when red flags start to pile up mm-hmm. and they pile up early, bail, right? There's plenty of fish in the sea. Just because he's not the one for us doesn't mean he's bad. He's just not for us. But here's okay. my, yeah, but here's where I was in that moment. It, I didn't know what those red flags were, what they meant. I was trying to be... I said you were still really new. Oh, I was still very, very new. So I was trying to be as open as possible um, because I didn't know what I didn't want at that point. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, any hoot. Moving on, what about the SARS girl? Oh, yeah. Well, and that's just it. And that's not like an inappropriate joke. She gave us like the worst bronchitis we've ever had. Yeah, like mad cow. Like she made us so sick. Yeah. And it's funny that our first two like tragic experiences were with singles. When You know, we have friends in the lifestyle that don't do singles at all because they see singles are single for a reason. And we've had great experiences with singles since then. But this particular single female... Which I blame you for because you stole her from another couple. I was feeling very audacious. And you were. And this girl. I didn't uh, really steal her. I rescued her. We did, in this case, everything we could have done. We were at a running of the unicorns event at Taboo in Baltimore. And it was a great time. She was dressed the part. She was in the right color to be a unicorn. And so we She looked amazing. And she was so much fun to dance with. And uh, smart, smart. Like. Smart enough in the environment because we'd all been drinking pretty heavily mm-hmm. that like we could actually have a conversation. So that like it just checked all the boxes. It was so much fun. And you asked her point blank, uh, are you married or, or in playing alone or are you single? And she said, I'm single, not married, not with anybody. I know. Uh, looking for a good time. You were just like, cha-ching. Yeah. Legit. And then everything went south from there, from her forcing us to play Britney Spears on repeat in the room to her husband calling at three o'clock in the morning on speed dial. Yeah, she told us there was a neighbor or something. And I think we've told this story before. We but have. it's just something that resonates because I felt very uh, betrayed, mm-hmm. you know, and we just met. So I, I don't know that I actually have a leg to stand on, but I did ask her point blank because that is something that matters to me. But because we've talked about this before. Uh, so we can save the listener or listeners if there's two of them out there that we can save them the the details of the story and get to what do we think we could have done differently and how did it shape our behavior after that? Uh, we did not approach single girls for a very long time. We kind of let them come to us organically. We haven't approached one since. Oh, I have. Uh, yeah, it really hasn't <laughs> happened. Yeah, it really hasn't. Happened. Oh no, I have. Yeah, not you as have. a couple. Yeah, you have. You <laughs> had girl time, but it has not been a, a couple thing. And, yeah. and that's not, I don't think it's because, you know, we have some sort of fear of them. It just really hasn't materialized in an organic way, which is kind of how we play. Yeah. And, you know, I, that's probably not the best tactic if that was a, you know, driver for us and something we wanted. If we wanted it more, we would pursue it more. That's kind yeah. of where I'm at with it. You got to go after it. You can't just wait for good things to come to you in this life, especially when it comes to girls. Yes. If you're a couple searching out a single female, you are going to kiss a lot of frogs. You're going to, you're going to make a lot of bets that don't pan out. You're going to go places where nothing happens. You're going to spend money on dates that don't don't pan out. It It's just kind of what happens when you go fishing. You spend a lot of money on lures. So do you want to talk about that super hot couple? You know what? I, I do think... Uh, Is that too much? Because I won't call you out if that's the case. No, I, I really don't. I don't have any issues with this. It, it is a, a very negative experience for me. Uh, personally, and it, because it's very recent. I was going to say it's recent, so I and have it's a follow still, up. It's still a little raw, uh, and it doesn't happen very often, but I think it's important that our listeners know that it happens, and I'm by no means calling me the best of us in, in the swinger space or in the, in the content creator space, but it does happen to all of us. It happens to the best of us. It happens to the worst of us, and what we're talking about here is we this incredibly super hot couple uh, Derek and Jess that we talked about in the lead in came down to see us and we're friends with these guys. We're legitimately friends with them. I hang adore out them. Do stupid shit with them. Like I want to be friends forever. Yeah, they're just, the, they're just amazing like, awesome. humans. And it, it really is a perfect storm, right? They really have, they check all the boxes for us, which is really unusual. Lightning in a bottle. Yeah. 
and as as beautiful and interesting and and as a sapiosexual she's really smart she's a marketing person like i am there's just so many things about her that check all the boxes and then when it came down to it uh i you know the bald avenger was like hey i'm taking the night off yeah. and i was like really dude i mean and you know there's a problem in a room when you're you know everyone's having sex and, and interacting when someone starts yelling at their dick and that's pretty much what I did. I was like, you son of a bitch, you're going to leave me now, you one-eyed piece of shit. Like, it's just, I was so I, I felt I felt for you so much, and I knew there was nothing psychologically that I could do to help you. I mean, I did the traditional things that, you know, in my mind, I should be doing. I came over, I, I was caressing you and kissing you and get, trying to get you to, like, Physically and mentally relax at the same time. Get out of my head. I, I, yeah, I, I blew you. I rode you a little bit. And I just knew that there was some obstacle, there was some block there that you and I had no control over. So the only thing I could do was temper the situation and make it more social. I wish I knew what it was. And so when we talk about ghosts, guys, we're really talking directly to you here. Because once it gets in your head, and you're haunted by what happened last time, it will happen again. And it this does happen, and it did happen to me again. And I'm not going to lie, guys. I'm carrying around a, a haunting here, you know, because I know I'm going to see him again. I'm going to see him again in a week. So how do you feel you're going to react to the situation, right? Because we're talking about how negative influences especially impact our decisions we make. What do you think... Your next steps are, are you going to avoid the situation because of how it happened? There's no circumstance under which I avoid the, cert, the, the situation or them because I enjoy their company so much. I love to hear that. Thank you. And I enjoy being around them so much and being with her so much. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, without being graphic because it's not what we do on this show, uh, you know, I really enjoyed being with her. So, uh, and hopefully there was some part of her that enjoyed it too, but I can just tell you that I obviously don't want it to happen again. So sure. what do I do about that? How do I, you know, exercise that demon and that ghost that's hanging over my head? And the way is honestly just to try and stay positive and make sure that they know that I appreciate them and I want to be around them and with them and that I want to get past it. Whatever it is in my head, I got to get over it. And it's unique to them because the last like five times that hasn't <laughs> happened to me. I don't know why. It's I, not okay. You but. know, I have a running theory, I think, because the it's high stakes. You know, it is lightning in a bottle and it's so damn rare that there's maybe some underlying mental pressure or, I mean, you definitely are a pleaser 100% of the time. Like, that's just who you are. And... I mean, I think it was just a new experience and you were, we were figuring each other out and he wanted so badly for her to have a good time. I think as a guy, you know, when you really want to be a rock star and you really want to rock some girl's world, that just gets in your head. And she even looked at me at one point and said, get out of your head. Aww. You know, and she knew what I was going through. And that's one of the things that I adore about those guys is that they are really emotionally intelligent. They knew it was going. Matter of fact, I messaged Jay from Average Swingers that I, night right I after it went did. down. I messaged Jay because I trust him as much as I do. And I was like, dude, this was so bad. And he laughed and laughed and laughed. And not. <laughs> Not at Spots me. Up. Okay. No, not at me. He just he <laughs> laughed because he's like, I get it. I, I'm with you. Like, been there, done that. And he tried to talk me out of my own head because he's Aww. a fucking great friend. But it was just such a, a thing, right? And any suggestions for getting over it? Honestly, as, as a person, I can tell you, getting over it means literally forget it, put it behind you, and focus on the relationship and the friendship because if they matter to you enough that it's in your head and you're worried about not pleasing them, the effort that you go to may be too much that you won't actually please them because your company pleases them, your friendship pleases them, and other parts of your body can please them. And eventually you will get over it. That this too will pass. Yeah. And that's important to remember. Also, I can bring pom-poms if that helps. You use those at the airport. <laughs> I use them everywhere. <laughs> I really do. I wish I was lying. 
Now let's talk about something that really scared the shit out of you as a germaphobe. Oh my god, this was awful. Are we going to talk about the the condom scare? Yeah, the condom break. Oh my gosh. So we were playing with a couple that we had played with a lot. A lot, like we we over were years. we were good friends for yes. a couple of years, and you know they live pretty far away, but we made we made the trip to hang out with these guys, and pretty much every time we hung out, we played because she and I got along great. You and he got along great. Yeah. Based on your squeals and the way you walk, <laughs> it was a day. good time. We had a good thing going. Yeah. yeah, it was a pretty good thing. But as it turned out, and what we realized over time is that he wasn't a good guy. He wasn't being good to her. He wasn't honest. Yeah, I kind of felt duped, at, like yeah. at the end of everything. But what really started that that snowball effect with the downturn of that relationship was that during intercourse, you know, there. What is this intercourse thing? You were fucking. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. I was getting hammered. Yeah. By did. his cock. Yes. And it was it was very intense, and there was a lot of going on, and the condom broke. And I think we both realized about the same time that it broke, and as I was rotating over, I believe I was going from on my back to like a, like a semi-doggy position, and I heard the rustling, and... Because I get so wet, like he put it in and it took a few strokes. And I was like, oh my God, he doesn't have a condom on. And I flipped the fuck out. I was not okay. This is not okay. Like, Jesus, like, holy crap, what do I do now? Because we've, it's never been discussed. I'm not one to do bareback. It's just not. It's just not my style. Yep. I and, just, I just can't. As an important side note, guys, because this is one of the most common questions we get about playing with couples in the lifestyle is what do we do if a condom breaks? And the most important thing you can do is, first off, you know, just like being on a train, pull the cord, stop the train. Yes. And that for me on the other side of the room, when I heard, you know, uh, at the time, I don't think we were married, uh, you no. know, my girlfriend freaking out. I went, okay, there's a problem. And I stopped what I was doing and turned around and and he acted like it was no big deal. No, that's where I was extremely disappointed. He was he was kind of shirking it off like, well, I just assumed it was okay because it already happened. I'm like, in no reasonable world is that an acceptable answer. Yeah, this is bullshit. So we're going to stop because I'm, I'm just feeling very uncomfortable now. And what was happening inside my head was... That progressive freak out, like well, you got matter and matter. As I did, I did because I I can't take or use contraceptives of any kind that are hormone related. So I don't have an IUD. I don't take oral birth control. I just fucking can't. My body says no. You know, I have underlying conditions that prevent me from doing that. Yeah. So so not only is that a factor because he was unclipped, but we knew they played with other people and yes. I, I mean, you just assume that they don't use the same amount of protection because that's probably the safer bet even if they do, right? And you get regularly tested, but now I'm completely exposed. So now what does that mean? That means systematically testing every two to three months over the next 12 to, six, to 16 or 18 months. Well, and to the theme of what we're talking about here today, that's ghosts and demons piling on each other oh, because yeah. now your fear is building. What oh, could man, this was... mean? What could this be? And so what do you do in that situation? It is all stop. Okay. And remember, in the lifestyle, we only go as fast as the slowest person. So if one person's pulling the all stop rip cord, everything stops. Yeah. And you say, hey, this is not okay. We're done. Yeah. We're not going to start again. We're not going to go, oh, it's okay. Put the condom back on because now I don't trust you. Yeah. And I mean, logically, when you look at the situation, it's already transpired. And if you put a condom on, does it really change anything? But I couldn't get past it. Because well, now you're not horny anymore. Now you're scared. No, again, I felt betrayed, and we never played with them again. No, we I never, just, ever, could, ever saw them again. I could never get past that just because it was so, the way he approached it was so blasé. To me, I was like, I don't trust you to have my best interest in mind. So I think this is over. You know, one of the best things that came out of, and I think it was Derek and I that were talking about this while they were down here, is the comfort level that comes from knowing that the guy across from you would, I don't want to say defend because this we don't come into those situations very often in the lifestyle, but has the same level of of, of care, and not care in feeding, but just he, he cares enough to look out for your person the same way he would look out for his own. 
And we had that, you know, that yeah. I had no compunction about walking away from you in public and knowing that there was somebody there that cared about you enough to look out for you. Yeah, and every other experience and how our interactions told that story verbatim. I mean, mm -hmm. crowded clubs, music events, different outdoor large public venue events. Like, there was a level of trust there that was established, and it's really sad, but from that one moment at all of that crumbled in front of me yeah and so that particular ghost haunted us so much that we didn't play for a year that's true because i was scared because i you know i wanted to go through the testing phase so in my mind the most responsible thing i can do is not play and continue to get tested and continue to get tested and just work through the psych psychological ramifications of it and i'm sure many many people out there have had worse experiences I'm probably a, a little neurotic, but, you know, it is what it is. That's my story. Yeah, and we're still friends with his ex, for what it's worth, out there. Uh, she's a good girl. Uh, not she's in the lifestyle anymore. No. But yeah, she's, she's, a wonderful she's doing lady. her thing. Let's talk about positive stuff, speaking of good yeah, people. Yeah, let's get past let's, the this bad got too fucking shit. Deep. All right. So, so what's one great thing that, that has changed the way we look at the lifestyle and kind of how we roll? So... I mean, everyone has different schools of thought on how they approach the lifestyle. But for me, the connecting with people on a deeper level, making friends in the lifestyle has been a huge positive influencer. Like I know just because we're all swingers doesn't mean we're all going to fuck each other. Mm -hmm. And that's OK. But it does mean that I can be my most authentic self in front of them because I don't have to shelter or hide that part of me. So that's that's definitely a positive that's come out of it and then it's like we have this whole cheering section right with our swinger friends when we're like this date went great we played with this couple like it, it's a very supportive and and wonderful environment and we all have our quirks we're all a little strange right yeah and we're all a little celebrated for it or well, mocked openly if they're really our friends yeah and i think it, it's a little easier for us uh, given that, you know, we really haven't made any anything about the lifestyle itself part of how we sustain our family. Yeah. So it's just friends and, and yeah. relationships yeah, for the, us. The, and the integration of the swinger friends into our vanilla lives. Like yes. a lot of our kids, like there are swinger friends that we've met in the last lifestyle that they essentially call their aunts and uncles or like. Yeah, they're none the you wiser. Know? It's crazy. Yeah, it's I I would not awesome. have predicted that, and I love it. I love it so much. Well, it's weird now that our adult kids kind of hit on our, some of our friends, Ugh, though, which that, is a little that's weird. That's still fucking awkward. <laughs> <Unex> <laughs> I find that strange. unacceptable. <laughs> it's like no, 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 that one's mine. Go away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You have to go get your own. Like, <laughs> find your own friends. Yeah. I do think though that there are people out there that have chosen to monetize what they do and and, and their lifestyle, mm -hmm. and I I wonder for them if it's just like it is for us if there's that if they have like a separation of church and state like the stuff they do for money and the stuff they do for fun i don't know because we don't do it but so you'd probably have to listen to somebody else or talk to somebody that does that sort of thing but for us i think a huge positive is those relationships and the authentic trust that we've built with a lot of those people and honestly with a lot of you because you listen to what we do and you come back and you share with us your journey you share with us your stories. Mm -hmm. And honestly, when we talk about ghosts of the past, mm -hmm. they make us want to share more with you yeah. because we feel like you're being honest with us and we want to do it too. Absolutely. It, that makes it, that literally gives me the easy button when, when someone's being vulnerable or, or completely open about their experiences and their feelings, it inspires me to do the same. Now, granted, I know not everyone's going to agree or see my perspective and a lot of things that, that that's totally fine but it's it's definitely an inspiration and something i would have never guessed if we had this conversation six years ago and said this is what we'd be doing in 2020 i would have laughed a little i'm not gonna lie because it's not like me i don't like the spotlight i don't like putting myself out there for a very wide audience i'm not a public speaker like not by nature it is something that i've benefited from from doing the podcast with yeah, you, you by have the way. gotten better it's I've noticed that insane I would not have imagined that me yeah. six years ago would have probably passed out. You know, it's funny because today everything is remote. Everything is zoom or Google meet or, you know, go to meeting or WebEx or whatever. 
And uh, dating's no different. So another ghost that's actually been a really good one, it's been our little Casper the Friendly ghost, is, you know, our friends in Phoenix kind of forced us to do video dates. Yeah, they were the first. They were. They were our, they were our virgin. And we heard they were a thing. We just yeah. didn't give a shit. We, weren't, we didn't care, you know, to do video dates. And we were so glad we did. Oh, my gosh. No regrets. No regrets. No regrets on that <laughs> one. No, it was fabulous, and I adore them, and, and every opportunity we get to talk to them, I'm, I'm so on board, but it did open the door for us to consider doing that, especially given the environment, and as often as we can, because, yeah. I mean, we have friends worldwide now, and like, hey, dumbass, you can connect with them whenever you want. Yeah, it's well, pretty amazing. Soon that girl's going to be working day shifts, so we get to talk to them more Ooh, often, too. sucky, so. sucky. Congrats on your new gig, darling. You know we're talking to you. So the last one I, I guess I want to throw out there, we've said talked about negative experiences. We've talked about a couple positive experiences. Mm -hmm. Should we go back to the well if we had a positive or negative experience? If it's positive, should we keep doing it? If it's negative, should we never do it again? Well, I, it's human nature. You want to repeat the same successes. So I think historically our behavior is, yes, we go back to the well when we've had a, a positive experience. For me, this is where you and I are, are a little bit of polar opposite. Like I said earlier, I struggle after having a negative experience to give it a second try. Mm -hmm. And I, I'd like to maybe try to do that. It really depends on the circumstances and what the this negative event was. But I, I don't know that I should have avoided as many second opportunities, especially if it's with somebody else. What are your thoughts on it? Again, as, as a, a former educator in some spaces, uh, I always told them and our kids, two points makes a line, three points makes a pattern. So don't let one experience set your course. You want to get a little more data than that. You want to make sure that, okay, this is definitely not what I thought it was going to be, or this is definitely something else than I thought it was going to be, because you might have a situation like you had with the Unabonger or whatever his, his name was. <laughs> Unabonger. Yeah, I mean, whatever that <laughs> stupid dumbass was. And so, yeah, that's a bad experience. But then, you know, you had Tyler, which was a completely fucking different uh, experience. Completely side of the spectrum. Like that, I'm so glad I finally took the leap and did that. Yeah. Because it was amazing. You had a great time. Yeah. And I'm like, why did I wait? <laughs> Why'd you wait so long to do it again? So long. Yeah, I so. had to, though. I had to go through the motions to, to work through it. So what I'm saying is it's not always a great thing to create some sort of corollary when there isn't one. Don't go, oh, my God, I need, you know, this happened one time, so it's going to happen every time. It's not going to be great every time because it was great the first time. It's not going to be bad every time because it was bad the first time. You have to actually assemble the data in a meaningful way and make sure that you're actually assigning the behaviors to where they belong. Some things are our fault. Some things we could have done better. In the case of the single girl, we certainly asked, she lied to us. So there's nothing we could have done. No, better. there's nothing we could have done differently. There's, there's nothing that could have changed the outcome there. Once we decided to go through with it, nothing could have changed that. Right. And in the case of the broken condom, we did everything we could do. We pulled the ripcord, we stopped, and we never went back there because we didn't trust him anymore. There's nothing else we could have done. Yeah. So and in, I don't in those cases, that. you can't yeah. just go, no, this is this is never going to happen again because that is the worst possible outcome. Now, by the way, all of the worst possible outcomes from any of these situations we talked about today never came to pass because that's how fear works. Most of what we fear will never come to pass. And I'm, I'm really glad we were in the majeure because it, it could have gone the other way, right? It's nothing's ever guaranteed. Now, you know, any of these experiences that we talked about here today on the show, you know, they can impact our daily lives and our family lives. We talked about, you know, having lifestyle friends that have become effectively part of our family. That yeah. they, They're friends, you know, and they know our kids and they know some of our family members. And that's fine because they know how to act. Yeah. Not everybody does. That's true. So you can't just go, hey, why don't you come on over and hang out with the kids? You better make sure they know you have kids and they know how to act around vanilla situations. Don't show up in a thong. Yeah. Right? Because that's don't not necessarily Don't strip down and run around the house because, I mean, our kids are comfortable in their own nudity, but not yours. <laughs> yeah. Now, the last one that I think could certainly be a ghost and, and a haunting ghost that sticks around for a long time is getting outed. Oh, that's a good one. Right? Or being afraid of getting out and so one that we didn't talk about the last time we recorded this episode but i thought of when we had to do the re-record was when one of our youngest son's friends parents yeah we talked about hit us up yeah that was super awkward i worked with her 
Yeah, and yeah. she's like, oh, my God, we didn't know that you guys were into this. We would have had so much more fun at work. Yeah, no, no chance. Yeah, her her kid and my kid were in the same class together for years. So pro tip, if you never talk about your kids talking to somebody for the first time in the lifestyle. Yeah, they th- mentioned like, oh, our kids are friends. And I went, oh, shit. Uh-huh. <laughs> and we should get the kids together and, and we can go have private time. Are you stupid? No, <laughs> I'm not going to yuck anybody else's yum because in my best Kate voice, maybe I don't know. Um, <laughs> you do not do an Australian. I accent. cannot. I'm not even going to try because it'll just be miserable. Um, but maybe that wasn't so inappropriate in other people's books. But to me, that hit home, and I'm like, it's that theory. I was told very, very young, like you don't shit where you eat. Like yeah. that's very important to me. That was way, way too close, and I was very uncomfortable with that. And I, that's more me it says more about me than it does about them. I think. Oh, I, I think there's no question about it. I was I was very turned off by it. As a matter of fact, I said something to him. I, I told him, first of all, you approach this completely wrong. Yes. This is not how you do this. You don't come at somebody and talk about their children and say we should get together. Yeah, because my first fear is like if I respond negatively or in a way that they're not going to be receptive to, that they the next thing I know, you know, we lived in a small town at the time. Like all our shit's going to be out there a for very display. small town. Yeah. And so my, my response to him was, we will respect your, we will respect your position and treat it with discretion. And we hope you'll do the same for us. Yeah. Meaning we're not going to say anything. We'd like you to not say anything. Kindly, please fuck off. Yeah. And that's you know, tough. that's, that's a newfound introspection for us. That's made us in a lot of ways. I think better parents, better friends, Better employees, in your case, where you become a better public speaker. There's a lot of things about the lifestyle and what we've done with this podcast that have changed our lives and the way that we approach social situations. I think we've become better friends and more emotionally intelligent through the really advanced levels of relationships we've dealt with as well. Wow. Are we going through like the the um, levels of enlightenment? Is I, that what you're saying? I'm really not. I would love to be extra enlightened because the last couple of times we played, I have not come. So I've got some buildup going on. All right. I'm ready. I'll get my helmet. Yeah. Yes. Okay. You might need a snorkel. <laughs> I'm down. Yeah. I got okay, this. That's what's going on here. Well, so last thing before we get out of here, is there anything that could happen, at least from your perspective, that would make you... It would spook you so badly because it's spooky. It would spook you so bad. Yeah. Make you want to leave the lifestyle. It would be very very little at this point. I mean, we've been through, you know, a few bumps in the roads together. I think when there's a an emotional investment or if there's a escalation to where, like, maybe polyamory comes into play that I would want to take pause and at least stalk in the situation. I don't I don't know. Honestly, I don't I don't foresee anything that could come up that we couldn't overcome as a couple. Do I see you know, a theoretical circumstances where we would take a pause and maybe step away? Sure. Maybe personal family shit happens, you know, mm-hmm. someone gets really ill or, you know, there's a big life event in our family that we we just can't make being in lifestyle priority, we'd never really put that first. It's just mm-hmm. a it's just a part of us. You know, we have our core and that and that operates outside of our core, even though we know deep down we're all you and I are both non monogamous, period. Sure. And what you're getting at there is for us, and this is not for everybody, I realize that there are a lot of people out there in the lifestyle that the lifestyle's a hobby for them. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I've heard that. And and I've heard that a lot and Frankly, if I'm being honest, it doesn't mean that I don't respect your opinion, but I don't agree with it. The lifestyle for us is an orientation. It's who we are. Yes. It's the lifestyle. We call it the lifestyle because it's the way we live. Mm-hmm. It's not something we do one Friday a month and we do it in secret 100 miles from our house. I mean, we've done that. We did that we have. for a while. And that where kids were younger and it was more important. So we don't. we totally respect when people do that. But when would we step away from our own orientation if this is who we are? And anytime something happens, in my mind, that is unhealthy for our relationship, because the most important thing is always us. 
Absolutely. And we expect that of, the, of our friends, too. We expect that. I think that's what I was trying to say when I was like, and Polly and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I just, I was grasping there. That's a great way to put it. I think you're you're spot on. I think it's just two ways of looking at the same ball. And it's still round. It's still red. It still bounces. It's the same ball. And I think in this case, anything that, that we would deem unhealthy for our relationship would cause us to take pause. That doesn't change who we are. It doesn't change our orientation. It doesn't change how we feel. It doesn't make us not a non-monogamous couple. Oh, you just used a double negative. I know. I said not a non-monogamous Flag couple. Flag on the play. <laughs> really? I, I think another time that is a good time to take a step back is when communication fails between the two of us or the four of us or the three of us. Mm, I agree. So Beautiful when someone starts lying, mm-hmm. when someone starts hiding things. Yeah, no secret squirrels. All of those things can lead to things that will come back to haunt you. Ooh, uh, that's and the best that that impression. terrible <laughs> sound effect was brought to you by Mallory of Casual Swinger. I don't have the buttons. I have to make my own. <laughs> you have all the cool buttons over there that I never let you push. I know. I got all these pretty light up buttons and you won't let me play with them. They're so guys, fan- somebody help me. So fancy. Why don't you tell these guys where to find us? We are done talking to you about haunting guys and things that have haunted us in the lifestyle. We need to get out of here and let you get on with your Hallow's Eve. Yeah, man. And don't forget we're doing the live virtual event with Swinging Down Under. Go to social media, click the link, sign up. It's totally free. We're going to party on Halloween, guys. And also, um, if you're interested in putting together a Halloween playlist that you can find at casualswinger.com. That's where you can find us and shoot us a message if you'd like at podcast.casualswinger.com. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Also, the dating sites are Double Date Nation, Cassidy, SLS, SDC, and Quiver. Oh, that sounds like it's going to do it. Now, parents, don't forget, Reese's Cups are fair game. I don't care how many your kid has, whether it's one or a hundred, they're yours. That's your uh, fee for raising those little crotch goblins. Yeah, man. And... Make sure to join us again just here in like nine days. We're going to get back on our regular cadence. We're going to have the beautiful and sexy Derek and Jess we talked about earlier. They're going to be on with their Virgin Hedo Trip Review coming up just here in a couple of days. We did that after our Hedo Trip in February. We hope you guys are going to enjoy it. That's going to do it for us. Thanks for joining us. You've been listening to Casual Swinger. Bye. Bye.